Now, as someone who reviews cars for a living, I see cars every day. The usual three box design really bores me sometimes, but there are those special things that come out of the woodwork which really surprises me, such as this one, which I'm gonna tell you about today. What's going on guys, Roy Robles here from ZigWheels.ph and today is a really much awaited day for me because we'll be reviewing something really special, something that's out of the ordinary and I think we'll be seeing more of in the next decade or so. This is the Hyundai Ioniq 5. Now before we start reviewing the Hyundai Ioniq 5, I'm going to start by saying that we'll be reviewing this not just as an electric car or as a car of the future, but as an actual, you know, a car review. We're going to tell you how this works for you in the everyday, but let's start with the looks. First of all, you've got this really boxy design. Any box here, it's going to get the technical from the referee. But take a look at this. You've got these pixelated headlamps right here. You see these DRLs, they really have this interesting pattern. You got this huge blacked out design up front. You won't be seeing any grills right here because this is an electric car and it's not pretending to have any vents or any grills. It just has these small flaps underneath here to cool down the battery in case it gets too hot. All right, so since we're seeing a lot more of these EVs on the road, get used to the fact that under the hood, you won't find any engine, instead more cargo space. It's called a frunk or a front trunk. Let me show you exactly that. If I can find the thing, there we go. All right, so as you can see, it says it right there, EV. So in case you're mistaken to open up the trunk looking for an engine, it's gonna scream right back at you and say, this is an EV, damn it. All right, so this is gonna be your trunk. And as you can see, you can, all, you can find all my crap inside. Usually I'd put that in the back, but I want to keep it a little bit more cleaner. I want to be, uh, keep it uh, neat and tidy, so I'm going to hide it right here in front. And all my stuff is in there. All right, but you can find also all these fluids here to so keep your car easy to maintain and all that, but this is probably my favorite feature of modern EVs. Let's head over to the side and see how that looks. All right, so Hyundai is marketing the Ionic 5 as a crossover SUV. Now, looking at it from pictures, I actually find it hard to believe, but looking at it straight here in the metal, it's not really that hard to believe because it actually is quite wider and longer than the Hyundai Tucson. It's also got around 170 to 175 millimeters of ground clearance, which definitely puts it right there in crossover territory. Also, you got these huge 20-inch alloy wheels shot in Michelin Pilot Sport EV tires. Those things are huge. Those are 255, 45, R20 tires, and good luck trying to replace them because those things are gonna cost you a lot. Overall, I really like how it fits the entire car, uh, the design, but um, if you put this in any other car, it's probably not gonna fit it quite well, but those look perfect in my book. Also underneath those 20 inch well, wheels, you've got 17 inch brake rotors. Going back to the design, you got this triangle theme going on right here. You got this huge sharp character line that runs across the side profile here, plus another diagonal right there below. Plus this color scheme, Hyundai calls it gravity gold matte. I don't see where the gold is coming from, but based on the sunlight that's hitting it right now, I can see a tinge of gold there, sometimes a bit of champagne color, but to my eye, probably I'm colorblind. It looks gray to me, but gravity gold matte, that's what they call it. Another sleek thing about the Hyundai Ionic 5 are these flush door handles right here, which actually pop up when you unlock them, making it easy to get in and out. Now the pixelated light theme makes another appearance right here in the rear section of the Hyundai Ionic 5. If you're familiar with playing those classic retro brick games like Tetris and all that, you definitely find these things really familiar. You do get the uh, power tailgate feature. It opens all the way right up, giving you access to all the space. It's about 520, 530 liters of space. But the only concern about this though is that it's got a pretty high loading height. So if you're going to put in some stuff inside there, it's going to be some extra weight going in and inside. If you want to increase the space of the interior, 
you can actually take th this uh, this thing out and it'll have a deeper space but you do have a hump right here for the battery or you can just keep it right there and put all your and hide all your other stuff underneath or use the frunk so for every purchase of Hyundai Ioniq 5, Hyundai will also be installing a home charger for you guys so that you can charge it at home. But that's not the only thing special about the Hyundai Ioniq 5. It also has a V2L feature or vehicle to load feature where you can actually use the power of the Ioniq 5 to power multiple appliances. So they do have this adapter right here. There you go. Nice and nifty. Kind of looks like that, uh, that, that uh, ectoplasmic gun that they use in Ghostbusters. So 80s kids, you know what that means. All you gotta do is open this up right there. There's a charger port. And then take this rubber thing out, connect it in. And then once it's in right there, turn it on. And this thing goes green. Once it goes green, you just take this off right here below and charge your item right there. All right, since I want to use the uh, all the power that I have in the Ionic 5 for range, I won't be demonstrating that right now. So in order to remove that, just unlock the car right there. You'll be able to remove it. Easy peasy. Nice and easy. All right, so inside the Hyundai Ionic 5, it certainly is as quiet as a church mouse on a lazy Saturday morning in here. You'd notice that it has a white interior, which does look great straight out of the factory once you buy this brand new. But if you notice, this is a test unit and you can see a lot of the dirt and grime from the previous users inside here, which is definitely something that I'm not very optimistic about uh, two, three years down the line with this kind of interior. But one thing that you would notice though is that the Hyundai Ioniq 5 definitely has a lot of space inside. The seats are are high up. They're, they're practically upright in this way. But for the driver, it's very adjustable in so many ways that I think I haven't fully uh, maximized and optimized it just yet. So it's fully adjustable uh, forward and back up and down there we go you can recline it and it can actually tilt forward and back as well so you got this huge touchscreen infotainment system it's very responsive plus it's got wireless apple carplay and android auto as well android auto unfortunately is not wireless in this one but at least it works the steering wheel is interesting because it is a, this two-spoke design right here it's adjustable for both reach and rake, which is easy. And this huge screen that acts as your gauges. You've got a lot of customization options here as well. What you could do is you can just check out the settings right there. And you can check the lights right here by the door panels. You can actually change the color of those lights, change the theme of your display. Now on the screen right here, this touchscreen infotainment system is definitely a legit infotainment system because you can check out your EV range. You can check out your HVAC or AC system right here. It's got six speakers all around, which is pretty nice, I gotta say, but a lot of it has to do with a sound cancellation. And because of that, you can hear how good the speakers are. Although it's just six speakers, it's a Bose setup. So uh, for you audio files out there, you can definitely well, you can definitely do with the uh, current setup of the speakers here, but I know you guys would want to upgrade that if you really are that much of an audiophile. So yes, there you go. You've got automatic brake hold right there. Your parking brake, it's actually right here on the left corner. Plus your shift lever is actually located right here underneath the uh, wiper stocks. One more thing, the, the uh, glove box, it actually is quite spacious and it, it opens up in a very unconventional way, kind of quirky way in fact. It kind of looks like a drawer cabinet right there. The Hyundai Ioniq 5 interior definitely just keeps on giving. One more thing, the center console, the center armrest, actually adjusts itself as well. So if you need more space right there below, you can just slide it back like so. Easy, slide it forward like that. All right, so enough of the uh, front end. Uh, it's definitely something that you would expect from an EV. And uh, let's head over to the back and see how that goes. All right, so in the passenger seat, uh, rear passenger seat of the uh, Hyundai Ioniq 5. It's something that uh, I've never experienced in any other car before because you got tons of space right here. So you got space for my feet. The knee room is phenomenal, even though I'm sitting behind my own optimal driving position, which is laid back 
and uh, kind of kind of slid all the way back right there but I still have a lot of space for my knees and my legs it's very comfortable here it's not very claustrophobic and that's how I like uh, my car especially when you're riding in the back so you've got aircon vents as well right here on the pillars you've got a center armrest which has a which has two cup holders and again two usb ports there plus the ionic 5 definitely has this feature where the uh, rear panel has this privacy glass where it's blacked out from the outside if you need even more privacy you can just slide these peasant lines up top and then no one will be able to know that you're riding in a hyundai ionic 5. and the seats are very comfortable they're very supportive and uh <laughs> If we're driving along drives here, I can probably fall asleep here, especially with the center armrest down. And I can even recline all the way back like so. Ah, <laughs> this is probably the best second row seat that I've ever been in in quite a while. Definitely the best seat in the house for me. Of course, second only to the driver's seat up front. All right. So, yeah, this is a complete win. It's a total win for me. But uh, speaking of wind, let's see how this drives because this definitely has a lot more to offer. It's totally different from the, any other car on the road. Let's see how this goes. All right, so we're now behind the wheel of the Hyundai Ioniq 5. The Ioniq 5 is a fully electric vehicle with a 77 kilowatt hour battery underneath with a motor that powers the rear wheel. So it's a rear wheel drive car. So there is an all-wheel drive option that is available internationally with a with two motors but what we're getting right now is the single motor and it's the long range the extended range version so what it does is that it has about 215 horsepower and 350 newton meters of torque zero to 100 is about seven seconds which pretty much makes it comparable to a lot of turbocharged crossover SUVs nowadays but the difference is it feels so much faster than that don't believe me check this out so right now we're just cruising along no problems and then if I punch it yeah <laughs> all right the the speed is limited to around 185 kilometers per hour to make sure that you don't have a little bit too much fun as you know we've reviewed a couple of electric cars uh, in the past and the thing about that is that unlike internal combustion engine vehicles, you don't need much pickup for electric cars to start to get it going. So the torque comes in right away. The 350 Newton meters of torque comes in instantaneously. There's no need for going up any certain rev range because it's either turning itself on or off. There are three drive modes in the Hyundai Ioniq 5. You got Eco, you got Normal, and you got Sport. And then there are three types of regenerative braking here. You've got level one. It feels like an engine braking vehicle, just setting up to third gear and then letting the vehicle coast out. Then you got level two and then, the, and then level three. It's like putting it on second gear. Then you've got iPedal. iPedal is also my favorite mode here because on iPedal, you can actually just use the uh, accelerator to move forward and stop. The beauty about iPedal is that because you're using the most aggressive form or aggressive level of regenerative braking right here, you get to recharge the battery as much as you can in the vehicles. NVH levels, by the way, in this car is just phenomenal with a few caveats. Now, uh, I love how that this has active noise canceling. It actually gets to actively uh, block out a lot of the noise from the outside. But most importantly, it blocks out the um, the tire noise since you don't have any engine noise your biggest concern right now would be the tire noise and because it has 20 inch wheels it's definitely going to work over time to make sure that it keeps the noise out my thing about that though is that it keeps the noise out a little bit too much where it really removes a lot of the driving experience in my opinion so yeah if you're someone who wants to have engine noise in their car this is not going to be uh, your cup of tea. Other vehicles and some EVs, there as, there's actually options to add noise to your drive, but so far I haven't seen that inside the Ionic 5. You've got uh, independent suspension all around, and because you've got those huge 17 inch brakes, stopping power is excellent. Now let's talk about charging and fuel economy. Well, fuel economy, not really fuel economy, I'm talking about the range. Since this is the long range variant, it has a 77 
kilowatt hour battery of which you can use 72 kilowatt hours so imagine you've got a 72 liter uh, fuel tank underneath this so if we convert that and we think about this being a kilowatt hour uh, car we're then going to count the kilometers per kilowatt hour that we can squeeze out of the ionic 5. so based on my driving on average we've already traveled around 75 kilometers in this car so far it says here that we consumed about five kilometers per kilowatt hour but what that means is that it's fairly close to the range or the uh, prescribed or the uh, recommended range that they have that Hyundai has for this car so they say that this can reach up to 480 kilometers and so far every, it's all working quite well for me now every time you buy an Ionic 5 Hyundai will then install a, uh, a home charger right in your home it's not going to be a fast charging unit but it's enough for uh, the Ionic 5 to get charged up from 0 to 100 overnight, about 10 to 12 hours. The sweet spot would be keeping it as charged as possible above 80% so that it doesn't degrade the battery as much. Battery technology these days are so advanced, they're so robust that they're not going to be like the phones per se. Uh, the, the degradation level would be much slower because of the technology that they have underneath this. So range anxiety for me isn't going to be that bad unlike older electric vehicles. These newer generation EVs are certainly an eye-opener for me. Even though we've been testing this all day for the past few days, I still have 80%. I still have yeah, it just turned 79 right now. I think that's what's important. The, the thing about driving electric vehicles is that companies have to ensure us that range anxiety will be a thing of the past. And getting my hands behind the wheel of the Ionic 5, yeah, I think we're getting there. When it comes to safety features, the Hyundai Ionic 5 is certainly uh, complete in that regard. Of course, definitely has a 360 degree camera system. It's got almost this autonomous driving feature. Again, we don't have uh, autonomous driving, a complete autonomous driving just yet, but it certainly has the platform for that. It has lane keep assist. It's got forward collision warning. Everything that you need for safety features is including uh, advanced driver assist systems you can find here in the Hyundai Ionic 5. Now let's talk about pricing though. This Ionic 5, the one with the um, long range, the extended range version, this is available for 3,698,000 pesos. On first onset, you're definitely gonna get shocked at the sticker price, but you get a really comfortable vehicle. It's quiet and uh, it's definitely quiet, it's definitely comfortable. If you're spending that much money on a luxury vehicle, I think you might be a little bit better off with buying electric. So there's one more electric vehicle down the road right there and one more electric vehicle down the road right here. And apart from being more environmentally conscious as a society, you also get the conveniences and the comforts of driving something that's as quiet and as comfortable and spacious as this one. With electric vehicles, this is as pretty much advanced as you can get. And I appreciate Hyundai and other companies for stepping up their game and introducing us to this new generation, this new kind of electric vehicle that's not just electric for electric sake, but is a great car in itself. So again, if you're in the market for uh, a good and luxurious and quiet vehicle, you could do definitely worse than the Ionic 5. The Ionic 5 isn't just a good electric vehicle, it's a great car as well. Until the time that electricity goes into the mainstream, this is a good stopgap because you got great range, you got great space, you got great driving dynamics, it's fast, and yeah, you could definitely do worse. And that's the Hyundai Ionic 5 for you. Now, a couple of years ago, EVs usually are considered a novelty, especially when going down the road and being an option in, a, in your car buying experience. But this time around, it's now a desirable thing to have, especially when you're figuring out something that's different and practical as well as fuel efficient and eco-conscious at the same time. So do you think you're in the market for an EV, especially in Hyundai Ionic 5? Drop me a comment in the comment section down below. And while you're at it, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification icon so you wouldn't miss any of our videos. Once again, this is Roy Robles from ZiggyWills.ph. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.